Hi there. Uh, today, only a few days to Christmas now, uh, we come to one of the uh, most well-known prophecies of the birth of Jesus um, from Micah chapter 5, verses 1 to 5. Uh, as usual, pause the video, have a read, and we'll talk. So Micah uh, prophesied many years before Jesus, and he prophesied at a time when Israel was under attack. And you can see that happening in the, there in the first verse. Marshal your troops, O city of troops, for a siege is laid against us. They will strike Israel's ruler on the cheek with a rod. Uh, and uh, Micah uh, sees a time, and in fact, it may have been happening at the time, when Israel's king would be uh, attacked by some foreign power, uh, some outside oppressor, and uh, would probably be defeated or certainly be struck on the cheek with a rod. Uh, and that kind of, that's really a, a sign of the fact that you've been thoroughly beaten. It's almost like the way a, a child is disciplined, isn't it? Um, uh, you're humiliated, uh, even more than that, more than discipline, it's, it's a humiliation. And, uh, and so uh, Israel, God's people, seems to be in dire straits. But then we get this, uh, this prophecy, but you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel whose origins are from old, from ancient times. And so Micah, or God through Micah, promises that even though Israel's current ruler uh, will be defeated, will be struck on the cheek with a rod, there's going to be a ruler to come uh, who, will, uh, who will rule over Israel, whose origins are from of old. Uh, and uh, that rule is going to come from a very unlikely place, Bethlehem Ephrathah, the smallest of the clans of Judah, the ones who's almost least significant, no one cares about. Um, uh, but out of that place, out of that clan will come the ruler whom God will send. And, uh, and as you keep going there, therefore Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor gives birth and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. There's even a sense of there's going to be a significant birth. Uh, but up until that time, there's not going to be much joy for Israel at all. Now, it could be that Micah was thinking about someone who will be born quite soon and when Micah gave that prophecy, but God, as he spoke through Micah, was evidently talking about uh, the birth of Jesus. And in fact, when uh, the wise men came to uh, ask Herod, where, where's the king of the Jews to be born? Uh, all of his advisors said, oh, I'll be in Bethlehem because that's what the prophet said. Um, and so... Uh, but we're told that Israel won't be rescued. In fact, Israel will be abandoned until that time comes, until she who is in labor gives birth. Uh, and, and, and so we'll begin the process of uh, all of Israel returning to God. And in fact, not just Israel, the rest of the Bible will say that, that they begin the process of all those who trust Jesus coming to God. But then look particularly at what sort of ruler this uh, person who'll be born, whose origins are from of old, will be. Verse 4, He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. This ruler who comes is going to be our shepherd. Shepherd's a great word, isn't it? Uh, that idea of a shepherd who cares for and looks after his sheep. Uh, sheep which are helpless and often uh, need to be taken, need, need to be shown where the water and the food is, and need to be protected from, from, uh, from wild animals or from theft or other things. Uh, this ruler, though, is going to stand, stand up against the oppressor who's coming, and that's what Michael is thinking about here, and shepherd and care for his flock, and he'll do that in the strength of God, in the majesty, the name of the Lord his God. And then, notice what happens next. And then they will live securely. For then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth and he will be their peace. And so Micah here promises, God promises through Micah, that from Bethlehem will come a ruler whose origins are from of old. And in fact, we'd say whose origins, are, who has no origin, who, who's actually the son of God himself. And he's going to uh, be born to a woman and he's going to stand and shepherd, shepherd his flock uh, shepherd all of God's people and in fact he'll do that uh, Micah doesn't know this but he'll do that by dying for them and then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth and it's true even today 
that the name of Jesus is heard all around the world. In some places, it's whispered or it's said in secret because uh, uh, when his name is uttered publicly, uh, uh, oppression comes. But when he returns, his greatness will reach the ends of the earth and he will be our peace. We'll have peace with God and with one another forever. That was all in Micah's prophecy, 700 years before Jesus. He, he in all likelihood, had no idea of the exact uh, significance of what he was saying. But he said it because it was God's word and he spoke God's word to the people. And 700 years later, with the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem, it came true. And we can look forward to it continue to come true as Jesus returns and his greatness then reaches without a doubt and without even to be spoken in secret to the ends of the earth. And he brings us peace with God and with each other forever. Why don't I thank God for that now? Heavenly Father, thank you for the Lord Jesus. Thank you that Micah prophesied his birth and his coming 700 years before. Thank you that he brings us peace, that he brings us um, uh, peace with you and peace with one another. That Thank you that he shepherds us and cares for us by dying for us. Thank you that even today his greatness extends to all the world. We pray that his greatness would further extend to people's hearts as they put their trust in him. And as he comes back, that we will look forward to being with you and with him forever. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow.